After being on 29ers exclusively for the past two years, I'm going back to testing 27.5. Why am I doing that? Well, that's what I'll talk about in this video. So off to my right shoulder is the Niner RIP 9 27.5. This is a demo that Niner sent me and I'll be doing a bunch of testing with this bike. But let me talk about wheel size and what my thoughts are today. And it seems to change a little bit over time and it may be different six months from now. For today, I think for cross country, 29 is absolutely the way to go. And I don't think very many people will argue that point. On the other end of the spectrum, Enduro, I think 29 is the way to go for Enduro. Both of those categories are about speed. So there's cross country racing, there's Enduro racing, and Enduro doesn't just cover racing, it also covers going over rough, rocky terrain at high speeds, whether you're racing or not. And I just, I like the stability of 29, but right in the middle is the trail bike category. And to me, that's where I think the lines are a little blurred. And that's why I wanna explore this segment a little bit more. So in the trail bike category, speed isn't really the main priority for a good majority of riders, I would say. It's about fun, it's about being outside, and it's about just enjoying the trail. And enjoying the trail kind of varies depending on who you are. So lately, my trail bike has been a Giant Trance 29, which I consider a mid-travel trail bike. And for purposes of this video, when I say mid-travel, I mean, you know, a 29er with about 130 millimeters of travel up front, maybe 140, and around 120 millimeters in the back. So there's a lot of bikes in that category. For example, the Niner Jet 9, the Transition Smuggler, the Yeti, I think it's the SB130. All of those are those mid-travel 29ers that are excellent trail bikes. Now, I really love how agile those bikes are. Now, it used to be five, seven years ago, a 29er with that much travel would feel like a barge on the trail. But the 29er geometry has gotten so good lately that these mid-travel 29ers are agile. In fact, when I jump on my enduro bike and then I go back to the 29er trail bike, I'm amazed at how agile those mid-travel 29ers feel. In fact, I would go so far as to say on an enduro bike on more cross country type trails or less technical trails, I feel over biked. I have more fun on a trail bike. So let's talk about fun. As I mentioned earlier, fun's gonna depend on who you are and what your priorities are. And that's why I think 27.5 is still a very valid wheel size for trail bikes because some people like the agility of the 27.5. They like the ability to kind of throw the bike around, to pop off of things. I'm not a big jumper, but I like the, the, the agility of 27.5. I like being able to initiate a corner quick. I like being able to brake quickly, accelerate quickly, and you get that a little bit more on the 27.5. Now, I still have a blast on my mid-travel 29ers. And so what I'm gonna be doing on this test is really kind of doing that comparison. Do I have more fun on a mid-travel 29er or do I have more fun on a 27.5 trail bike? So let's talk about the travel of this bike. So when I was thinking about 27.5, I think the 150 travel range is perfect. Anything less than that, you're gonna want the rollover ability of a 29er. Much more than that, you're kind of getting into that enduro. Now, I'm not gonna consider downhill for this because that's a, a little bit different segment, but I think between cross country and enduro, I think you capture most mountain bikers out there. So that, that when you get up to the enduro size, I think you're gonna to wanna to go 29 just because of the type of terrain that you ride for enduro. Now, I know there are still people who race and ride enduro bikes for 27.5. My son's one of them. Uh, he rides a Transition Patrol, loves that bike. He's a 27.5 guy. Uh, but I think more and more people for Enduro are going to 29 for the characteristics. I don't think many people would argue that if speed is the number one priority, 29 is going to be hard to beat. It's just physics. 
But this wheel size and this amount of travel, I think makes a really, really killer trail bike. So when I was thinking about what 27.5 would make a good trail bike, I wanted carbon. I wanted a front travel around 150 and a rear travel around 140, 150. I spent a lot of time on a giant trance. I had many of those, I liked it. But then I was thinking about this Niner 27.5 and I said, that is probably the perfect travel for a 27.5. Now I had the 29er version of the RIP 9 a while ago and I actually consider that more enduro. That, that kind of blurred the lines between trail and enduro. I think it was a little bit closer to enduro than the 27.5 version because the wheel size can kind of change the, the characteristics of a bike. So at the end of this test, I'm going to either buy one of these, maybe even buy this demo if Niner will sell it to me, or I'm going to send it back and I'm going to get either a Jet 9 or maybe a Transition Smuggler. It just kind of depends on the builds. This bike has one of the best builds I've ever ridden. I've already done some rides on this bike. The new Shimano XT, really, really good Fox suspension. I like the wheels, I like the tires. I'll do a first look on this bike where, you know, typically my first look, I haven't really spent any time on the bike. This one's gonna be a little bit of an exception because I could not wait to get on this bike and it has not disappointed. So I'm really looking forward to this kind of new little series that I'm starting of trying to figure out what's the best wheel size for me for trail bike riding. I'm not gonna give up my cross country 29er, I'm not gonna give up my Enduro 29er, but for going out and having fun, the trail bike is probably the bike that I grab the most when I'm heading out for a ride. And so at the, en at the end of this test, I'm going to decide which one's better, the 150 Travel 27.5 or the 130, 140 travel 29er for a trail bike. All right, that'll wrap it up for this video. Any questions, comments, leave those below. Have you done a similar test? Which wheel size did you feel was best for you? Thanks for watching.